Greetings to all of you here in noisy southwest Oklahoma. Storms have been rolling through and I've been cautious about uh, when to start this. We're going to go ahead and do it now and if my husband who is serving as the weather reporter right now uh, for in this house he will let me know if it's time to get out of here. So just glad to be with you tonight and trust that everyone has had a good day and the Lord is, is so gracious and kind. I'm so glad you know to be in the house to be you know in our house here and then to go into my prayer room this morning just had a great time of worshiping the Lord and I'm just thankful Lord I told the Lord this is your room Lord this is your room and you know right now you know, in fact the whole house is his but that particular room my prayer room is dedicated it's dedicated to him all right uh, my name is Karen Clymer I'm with Elgin First Assembly of God Elgin Oklahoma and we are looking forward to having our Sunday school tomorrow. We have Sunday school for all ages, 921 3rd Street, Elgin, Oklahoma. Our pastor is uh, Brother Larry Toma. He will not be preaching in the morning service tomorrow, but we have an evangelist that is coming, um, a Brother brother Mark. I know right now the names, I'm so sorry, the name has slipped my mind. Maybe it will come back to me in a little bit, but we do have an, have an evangelist that's going to come and be with us. We look forward to having him, and I know it's going to be a great service and that will be 1045 is when worship 945 is for Sunday school and Sunday and then the regular service is 1045 and so if you can make it and you, you do not have a church home we'd love to have you all right and Mark Perky the evangelist is Mark Perky I should have had that name written down all right so the title of our lesson today is the spirit produces love joy peace now that's just three we talk about the fruit of the Spirit. This is only three of them. So that's what we'll study today is the Spirit produces, that's the Holy Spirit, produces love, joy, peace. All right. And our central truth is the Holy Spirit produces love, joy, and peace in the believer. And our key verse is 1 John 3, 18. And it reads like this. Now we'll do it from the King James Version. First, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And then from the New Living Translation, it reads like this. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. You know, that's important. People are looking for actions, you know, and we like that when people, when uh, they say what they mean, mean what they say, that they live what they say, that, that, that they believe. And also we have here in, in uh, our learning objectives, we will discover the fruit of the Spirit in its various expressions is founded on love. We will recognize true love, joy, and peace are not mere emotions, but Christ-like attitudes or dispositions the Spirit produces in believers' lives. We will choose love, joy, and peace. Yes, don't you don't you love it when there's just peace? You just feel with the peace of God, and just to, and you like it when everything is peaceful. Just uh, you know everything that, that you don't have anything major that's upsetting in your life. You know, like everything is just going great. But you know, there's times that things happen that really, uh, there's very unsettling and terrible things that can happen. And then, but if a, a child of God who is just rooted and grounded in the Lord, yes, they may be heartbroken about the things that are happening, but yet there is a peace and a quietness in their heart knowing that God is with them and knows all and knows everything. Rowena, so glad to see you on right now. We'll be having more come on maybe, or there may be some of those that may be in a cell or somewhere. I don't know. Let me see here if we can get started here on so as we uh, we get in dive into our detailed study of the fruit of the spirit let's think about the difference between I uh, talked about between a fruit tree and a Christmas tree well a Christmas tree uh, you know you think how that a Christmas tree there they may be valuable because of what you can put on it you know I know people uh, many people get very excited about putting up a Christmas tree and uh, my husband and I we don't even bother to put one up because you know when we have uh, we have animals in the house and I don't uh, and I don't know that the dogs would tear them up but I remember one year we had a kitten, a cat in our house. She grew up to be a pretty little little cat, but we, come Christmas time, we couldn't keep the ornaments on the tree because she was batting them down. She thought it, it was a game. But you know, you decorate a, a Christmas tree and it doesn't come decorated. You have, you, you're decorated and you place them and then you put gifts under it. It talks about fruit trees then, on the other hand, are known for what they produce on their own. And so you think about the fruit of the Spirit as something that is naturally produced rather than something that you had to decide to decorate ourselves. But as we grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, these fruit, the fruit of the Spirit will be growing in our lives. And may we nurture that and want that to happen. We never want it to be said of us that 
they're so moody. You know, I we had an evangelist one time that would talk about that he just he just did not like that at all. When a, a person, especially a Christian, was known for their moodiness, you just never knew what mood. You no, know, we don't want Jesus was not moody. Now there's a difference in times when people can be going through some deep distress that something that has happened. There may be some danger they're in, or uh, it may be financial woes. It could be. Uh, any, maybe you're going to have to make a move. You didn't know you were going to have to make. Maybe you can be all kinds of things, and you can maybe be, uh, you, you have some, some sadness and all in, in your heart, but there can be the peace that passes all understanding that in spite of your circumstances, God is still God, and your life is still hid with Christ in God. He knows the situation. He knew this before it ever happened, and he has a plan. And that is the, the key thing is that, that we remember, but, you know, uh, we remember that God is with us, but Satan is going to come there to undermine us and under, undermine our faith. And our, that's what he is. He's, he's a liar. He's a deceiver. And we know that. So let's walk through God's produce department here. I like this the way the writer is saying this. And with, uh, with, let's walk through God's produce department and start examining the Spirit's fruit. And so there's so many fruit. You know, like in the natural, oh, you can think of so many fruits. And it said here, what about, could somebody name uh, maybe a as many fruits, uh, just regular fruit we're talking about that we go to the grocery store and buy. Go to God's, God, just talking about going to any just produce department. And so I'm not going to take time to do that. I just know probably banana is my favorite fruit. and But I love strawberries and, and I love peaches. And, but so and you have yours that, that you like. So, but we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. Kelly, good to see you pop on. I can always count on Rowena and Kelly. And so thank you, and others too. And I know people are busy, and others will, will get on later. Maybe, uh, I don't know, Kelly, if you're having a stormy weather there, but it's here in southwest Oklahoma, it's this afternoon. We've had the, it's they've been rolling through. Fortunately, none have actually hit here, and we've been praying that there is no harm done anywhere, uh, that it's just rain, because we can definitely use the rain. It talks about here, uh, you know, we want the fruit of the Spirit that's growing in our life, producing fruit that's making us more like Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's definitely what we want. Emotions, I said, are natural feelings arising from our circumstances. But, you know, uh, you, you know our feelings, can, they, you, we can't trust feelings. Uh, they, they just, uh, they can just, I mean, we can be, there are people that are so emotional uh, that you, you just, uh, they can just get so alarmed just so quickly and they don't seem to have a, Maybe they're a child of God, and they don't ever seem to put, really put their faith and trust in God. It should be the child of God should be the one that is at peace in the midst of the storm. I remember uh, many years ago that we had gone to Oklahoma City. A friend of ours, her husband, had, a, had to have a heart bypass surgery, and this was when it was very in the early stages. And this hospital there, even though it was a large hospital in Oklahoma City, he was the first five bypass surgery, heart surgery they had done. And it was a very, uh, very uh, difficult time. And I remember that we went up to be with our friend. It was her husband who was having this surgery and, and, uh, and how that he had survived it. But they and they'd found some other issues and all. I just remember how upsetting that it was and all and how that his wife, and we, uh, we was trying to be a comfort to her and help uh, live, going through this. And there was her mother-in-law over there who was the mother of this Man, it was her son that had this surgery, and she said, look at her. She's just a rock. She was just at peace with God. It wasn't that she was, oh, it's no big deal. It's my son. No, uh, so what? Uh, if he dies, he'll go to heaven. It wasn't that, but it was just the peace that passes all understanding. That's what the Lord said we can have. She had her faith and trust in God that either way, her son was going to be, if, if he lived here, he was a winner. He would continue preaching the gospel. And if the Lord chose to take him home, he would be with the Lord. And to live as Christ, to die is gain. So uh, this is what the way she was looking. But I remember that, that, that the wife there was looking and saying, look how she's just like a rock. She just had no, no fear. No fear. She was in the middle of the storm. She had her faith and trust in God. And it was an encouragement uh, to her. So um, the fruit of the Spirit describes the attitude the Spirit produces in a believer's life. And what we know about God, putting our faith and trust in Him in the middle of the, in the midst of these storms, is what makes a difference. Anybody can be joyful and happy when everything is going well, but when it comes to times when you say, "Well," people will say, "Well, what have I done? Why did God do this?" So many times, people will want to blame God because something happened. 
Well, the Lord may allow that to happen, but whatever that the Lord allows, it is for our benefit when it's all said and done. God will get himself glory, and we will be blessed and honored. That's just the way the Lord works. We're, we will come out on the winning side if we put our faith and trust in the Lord. Part one of our lesson is love by the Spirit, love over all. And I didn't take time to read all. There's about 10 or different scriptures it's going to allude to, and I didn't want to read them all off at one time. But for those of you who might be taking notes, this is from this first part is from Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. It says, What does the Spirit produce in us? What kind of fruit does a life in the Spirit bear? Well, I tell you the, what kind it is. Our writer said, The character of Christ, in just one word, the character of Christ is love. Everything about him is love. And it mentions here in our lesson that there are many uh, commentators who believe that. You know that when you when you talk about it's the character of Christ, you eat all this fruit, there everyone just just love the, the base whole thing for all of this is love. And if a person is, is if they have if they have peace and if they have joy and all, it's all rooted in love because of our love for God, our love for Him. We love the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit because we love them. We are we can have peace and the quietness of God. We can have the joy of the Lord, though things may be. Uh, really uh, seem like in complete disarray around us, yet there is that deep, settled peace and quietness that God knows everything. He's in charge. He's not been taken by shock. He's not shocked here. Like, I didn't see this coming. He knows the end from the beginning. And so may we realize that and be at peace and rest with him, know that he does help. He does guide. He does see us. And he's watching us. You remember in this Bible, the story we hear about the disciples, you know, when the, uh, the storm, one time, you know, he came walking on the water. Another time he was there with them. They went down to wake him up. Don't you care? We're about, you, he, they had Jesus with them. But he wasn't awake. He wasn't, well, he already knew, you know, he'd already been communing with his father. And so, and there, what's wrong? Where's your, where, where's your faith? You know, he was right there with them. How could he sleep in the middle of the storm, you know? It was as though he didn't care. Oh, yes, he cares. He knew what, you know, before it was all said and done, they were so disturbed and up and what he got. He got up and he looked at the winds and the waves and he said, peace, be still. And I think some people say maybe he shouted. I don't know what he did. Oh, Deborah, we're so glad. Deborah, Deborah, for those that will be listening later, know Deborah and Ted, her husband, have, have moved. Uh, into the area and they started attending our church Wednesday night we are so happy to have them and we they already we was going to introduce them to Brahms we found out they've already found Brahms close to where they live so all right all is well with the world so we appreciate uh, them being here being in our church and just welcome welcome now as one of us at Elgin First Assembly of God so all right, so the Greek word says using the the Greek word text using the singular term fruit of the spirit rather than the plural fruits of the spirit. Even the verb in verse 22 is singular. The fruit of the spirit is based on this grammatical structure. Many New Testament scholars interpret the spirits as being preeminently and all-inclusively love, like I'd already mentioned that. So after all, love is the supreme characteristic of God. What is the main one? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. Imagine that, the everlasting life with the Lord. We're just here, our life, uh, you know, I think about how uh, I, you know, I'm in the fourth quarter of my life and I've told people, sometimes I said, just look, I'm almost home. I'm, I'm, just, I'm in the fourth quarter. I'm almost home. And that I should be, hopefully it's a, a joyful uh, time and anticipation uh, that one day, but when I do die, I will be going to be with Jesus forever and ever and ever. And I was just listening today to the funeral service of the, one of our stalwarts of the faith, Brother David Wilkerson, who passed away, I think it was 11 years ago. And I thought, and to hear the testimonies and, and the joyfulness of the people, and, and of course they were, would miss him, but yet what he had done while he was here. And that's what we want to be doing is be exhibiting the, those fruits of the spirit we have them in our life and be out to people to see that people that are maybe going through deep distress and they see us with peace and rest maybe you're going through something and they're handling it far different than you maybe they're all disturbed and distressed and they're wringing their hands and the child of god as you there 
and well, why does, does it that you don't care? Is it that's not registering with you how bad it is? Yes, it is, but you know that God is greater than your situation. People are watching us as children of God, how we respond in distress, how we, when we're in times of great distress and all, what are we doing? Love is a supreme characteristic of God, and when we love the Lord, we want to, we want to be like Him. If the fruit of the Spirit can be encapsulated under the heading of love, it makes sense it's a God-given quality would have multiple manifestations. That's it. It just manifests itself in many ways. It, our lesson brings out here that when you look at that, said, uh, so the fruit of the Spirit here we're talking today, we're talking about patience, and, or we're, and said, uh, we, you mentioned this, it looks like, it, it would look sometimes like patience. Love would sometimes look like gentleness. Sometimes it would look like faithfulness. But this, and you know, it always, whatever these uh, fruits, a fruit of the Spirit that we mentioned, joy, that it would look like love. It's everything. It's rooted in, in what? The love of God. And, 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 you know, Jesus was the epitome of love. How he, and so every, I think you could say that love is just almost just like the, uh, it seemed almost like a foundation there. But anyway, uh, sometimes love, you know, when you're patient, when you're kind, and, uh, you know, when, when you go through, you're going through something, you can take just like simple things that can be, at, maybe you're at a store and you're waiting in line and, and maybe uh, something is happening that the line's not moving and you're waiting and you can all identify with, with that. But what does a child of God do? What is it? Pe people may be looking up there and saying, well, why don't you do something? What's wrong here? And they're fussing and complaining about it and maybe there's nothing the person can do. There's one store in particular I can think of where we go sometime and I, I, we almost dread going in. We first want to look and see how many how many uh, cashiers they have because sometimes only one. We've been in there when they're uh, calling for help. They get on their speaker and they call for help. No help comes. What are we going to act like during a time like that? Are we going to be sweet? Are we going to be patient? Are we just, you know, it's so good when we as a child of God, when we can just begin to interact with those around us and be joyful if everybody else is complaining and fussing. Uh, well, we can just make the best of that situation and just show the joy and the love and the peace of God in our hearts. We can say good things. We can say, well, you know, they've called for help and they haven't come, so I tell you what, they'll probably get help in a little bit, and we can just show a kindness. And, you know, you can feel for that person there that's waiting to have somebody come and help them, and we can give them a smile, you know, and let them know that we're with them. In fact, we can even pray that the Lord will intervene and help. But, you know, but the faithfulness and gentleness, those things, this love always comes from God himself. Has given, the Lord has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. You know, love is a wonderful thing. We want his love. Let me see. I've got a question here. Um, I don't know about answering all of that here right now, Kelly. Thank you for the question, though. Uh, let, let me get back with you on that maybe after this lesson we can maybe respond to that but right now I'm having to I'm having to think about that as I teach this and I, I but I, I appreciate the question I really do and you know it's sometimes there's something we have to do we have to just take a stand ourselves and as gentle, gently as we can we just have to how do we put it I don't want to say this mean and hateful but we, we just have to put our our foot down quietly in the love of the Lord and always show peace and quietness. I want to be settled and established in the Lord in a good way. And the fruit produced by living in the Spirit is an attitude of love which pleases God, blesses others, and satisfies our soul. It talks about sidestepping fickle, fickle emotions. It results in a settled way of thinking and feeling. Our behavior should always reflect that of being like Jesus, to honor Him and to respect Him with everything that we do. Love above all. That's And these scriptures, if you're going to take notes, is Colossians 3. 13 and 14, 